he come across as a very laid back, casual <coughs> sort of guy? I mean, I mean, did he did he have any sort of nerves or did he? Uh, well, I didn't right? see them. I don't no. think so. <laughs> no, no, no. Did uh, you? Uh, I think. Uh, well, I suppose most players have a little nervous reaction to some some matches at some time or another, mm. either before going on or getting started or whatever, or d during the match, uh, depending on the circumstance of the match. But. No, Lou was a pretty laid back character and uh, you know, very casual, so nothing really ever seems to bother him no. that much. And uh, you know, in the amateur tennis days, that's why Lou's performances were a little bit up and down because he, he's, uh, you know, he, he, his feeling of, of concentrating on any particular match uh, wasn't too important to him. But you know, in the bigger events, important matches, that's that's when he really got uh, got his adrenaline flowing and got charged up. So uh, he had some. Uh, you know, according to the tennis history books, Lou had some very poor losses, but he, <laughs> in the amateur days, but he certainly had some great wins. Yeah, um, you know, uh, he he seemed uh, he seemed to uh, to have this this back problem. You know, he had, a, he had an injury. Now that you, you've gone through what 50 years of playing tennis, was uh, uh, look at the, the, the you know the day you were starting oh. the game. Now, unfortunately for Lou, he had, a, he had this back yeah. problem, and this was a bit of a you know, a bit of a shame. Really, for just a great player. Yeah, well, Lou did a lot of physical work in the early days. I, I wasn't, you know, privy to all of that no. that work, but he, he did uh, spend a lot of time in Sydney at the Police Boys Club, and uh, I think uh, you know various exercises and different other weight training there, and you know things have been changed. Just as we were talking about the tennis racket equipment, mm. you know things have been changed these days. The training ideas or ideas of diet and things like that, and uh, so maybe there was some in instance. The, where Lou might have done some damage to yeah, his young body. Yeah. That's, that's possible. Mm. Uh, but uh, certainly when Lou came back to, to play a lot more tennis as a 14 and a 15 year old, he, he was a very strong young boy. He wasn't real tall, but I mean, he was, he was very strong, so, so much more powerful than what I ever was. And, and uh, that was just the way he played. So whether he did overdo the body work on various training methods uh, that, that, uh, that that uh, kind of uh, accentuated some of these problems, but uh, what do you, you know, mean? so it was, it was sad that that you know any, any of these that happened, Lou was seemingly prone to a little bit yeah, of injury and something like that. Mm. Just going back to the, obviously anybody wants to win the Grand Slam, and then you you know you stopped that dream for Lou in uh, in America. I mean, all right, we're on television, but what do we say to you after the match? <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, I, you know, I mean, Lou was always a good sport, and mm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he accepted the, the defeat as, you know, maybe disappointed underneath, but he didn't, certainly didn't show it. I mean, he was happy that I had a win, and I mean, we were, uh, you know, competitive, and uh, uh, we always always had been, and uh, but uh, I, I guess it was one of those things where, uh, you know, Lou wasn't too too worried about it at the time, mm. but. Uh, as tennis history shows, I mean, winning the Grand Slam is something that was very important. So. Yeah. Now, going back to the match, the famous match uh, in, in England when you played Drogna, I mean, that was, I, I asked this, it was a very popular win, but the people said that you were young and you got plenty of time. Right? <laughs> now, this guy had been there 11 times trying to win it, and, and suddenly he comes up against Ken Rosal, and uh, I don't know what he might have, might have, must have think before the match, but uh, he went on to, to win. Mm. Um, did you feel in your own self that you, well, I've got a lot of time ahead? Uh, well, I wasn't sure. I was just trying to take uh, advantage of the moment, uh, really. Uh, it was an ambition that all of a sudden came to me a little bit earlier than I expected, to be able to mm. play at Wimbledon and certainly to be in the final that particular year. But uh, I, I was aware of, uh, you know, Drop's play and his reputation, and I'd seen him play for a few years before that. And, uh, uh, you know, I... I played well during that, that tournament and uh, unfortunately just not tactically well enough in that particular final. Uh, uh, I, was, I was probably a little, little bit you know, too conservative and didn't use some of the best parts of my game. Mm -hmm. If I'd been encouraged to you know, maybe do a, a few more things by, by going to the net a little bit more, well, I, I might have had a better chance. When do you think you actually were at your peak? What year? How old were you? When you in your opinion, you were actually at your peak. Oh, well, it's, it's pretty hard to say. It's, uh, I know, you all the time, you know. Yeah. But, uh, no, well, I, I think uh, it was accepted that uh, a lot 
of the players that came from the amateur ranks into the professional ranks in those early days, we, we had a lot of tough tennis. It wasn't wasn't kind of accepted around the world as being really you know tough tennis, but uh, we we uh, we did find that a lot of us did play better once we moved in to play against the players like a Gonzalez or a Segura or Frank Sedgman or Sonny mm -hmm. Trabert who were already professional in those days and even Jack Kramer who started to play some you know more more tennis in those days and uh, uh, so I, I know for myself my tennis improved a great deal so I, I think probably some of my best tennis was played in those early 60s mm -hmm. uh, and by this time other fellas had come into the pro ranks like uh, Lou and uh, Ashley Cooper and Mel Anderson and Alex Olmedo and uh, you know, so we, we had some, some good tennis and some tough tennis. So I, I think my game was pretty strong in those years. But I, I think, uh, I was, as I said earlier, I was very lucky that my game held together. Uh, you know, I, I've always kind of said whether it's right, I, I get the maximum re result from the minimum of effort. And uh, uh, so I think that's helped me to stay involved as a player in the game for, for, for many years. And in the earlier pro years, when I was really kind of old for tennis players, 33, when, when the Open Tennis came in, I thought, well, you know, I'll keep it going. I had great family support. And my wife supported me and to, uh, to travel and, and, uh, and, and play. And uh, that was really the best thing I, I knew what to do at that stage. So uh, I, I surprised myself, I think, and a lot of other of my supporters uh, that I could could play as well as I did. So I, I think I've probably played some of my best tennis, you know, talking of peak tennis, yeah. in, in those years when I was in the age bracket of 35, 36 and 37. Mm. And That's quite interesting because they're mm. talking about Martina was 37. Mm. You know, I mean, it's almost unheard of that a woman can can play that sort of what well, is unheard of to, mm. to, to do what she did at 37. So it's mm. interesting you say a similar sort of age. Mm. Well, Martina's had a great record. There's no doubt about mm. that. And I, I think a lot of her tennis has been fairly fairly easy. I don't think she'd mind me saying that she's won a lot of matches, but she's won a lot of matches very easy. Mm. I mean, the men's tennis when you win matches, they're usually pretty tough, and uh, so the men's men's tennis career might not be as long as long as a woman's career, right. certainly these days, right. uh, not only for the top players with the amount of money that they can win in a short space of time, but the possibility of, of, of some kind of injury anyway, or losing desire right. for trying to stay in shape and, and really stay at the top of the tree. Right. So, Ken, uh, just a few weeks ago when I was talking to Lou, he, he told me that you were coming, uh, unfortunately not with us now, but I, I, I can imagine him uh, uh, sort of thinking, you know, if he could, you know that, he, that you were coming to his, uh, his camp over tennis to play. Uh, I know he, he was looking forward to it so much, mm. and, I, I, and I know that you're looking forward to it so mm. much to go and play there, mm. in his, you know, uh, on his own court. Mm. So um, all we can say to you is uh, have a lovely week. You're going to have some interesting games. We've been yes. looking at the draw early on. Yes. And, uh, you know, in, in, uh, we'll all be thinking of it at the time. And, uh, well, okay, thank you, thank yeah. you on his behalf, Lee, for being here today, yeah. and uh, yeah. it's been just super. Yeah, so well, thank we you. hope it's going to be a good week, and uh, we're all happy to be here, and and these unfortunate circumstances, and because mm. uh, we we all knew that Lou was was sick, and uh, but, uh, but the family uh, there, all the family, we we'll miss them. Uh, I haven't seen Lou for nearly a year, mm. so uh, even though he's in Australia at the Christmas time, but. Uh, uh, we didn't get to see him at that stage, mm. but uh, anyway, we, we well, can only yeah. do what, what we know best. Well, the good thing is like everybody will be, so the whole family will yeah, be all good. Yeah. It's the year of the family, 1994, so mm. the family will be there, and uh, once again, Ken, thank you very much for good coming. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Yeah, good. Thanks.